Hey, it's Joe, and welcome back to Human Fluence. Now, imagine a world where every piece of knowledge about yourself, the universe, and everything in between is within reach. Science, philosophy, spirituality, it's all there, waiting to be discovered. But here's the catch. There are systems in place, deeply woven into society, that do everything they can to stop us from thinking critically, from questioning, from seeking the deeper truths about life. Let's be real here. With all the knowledge we could ever need at our fingertips, why does it feel like so many of us are more disconnected from truth than ever before? Why does it seem like Even in the age of information, true understanding is rare. Well, let's go through these systems one by one, and as we do, see if you recognize how they subtly, and sometimes not so subtly, keep us from the path of critical thinking. Let's start with education. Schools often teach us what to think, but rarely how to think. Rote memorization standardized tests it's all about fitting into a box you memorize you pass you move on but what if that box is limiting the very essence of who we are and what we're capable of understanding imagine if instead of testing our ability to remember facts education focused on cultivating curiosity creativity and self-awareness but no because that doesn't fit into the structure right The structure thrives on predictability, on producing people who go along with the system, not those who question its foundations. Then there's the media, the endless flood of headlines, distractions, and narratives. We're told what's important, what's true, and what isn't. And every day there's a new story to keep our minds engaged with the next thing and the next But how much of it is carefully curated to keep us within certain boundaries? The truth doesn't always lie in what's being shown to us, but in what's left out. The constant bombardment of information creates a layer of noise that drowns out deeper reflection. Are we really aware of who shapes the stories we consume? Who decides what gets airtime? And what stays hidden? Because it's in these omissions. In the silence. That the most significant truths can lie. Then there's social media. Originally a tool for connection. A way to bridge distances, bring people together. Has turned into a machine of distraction. Self-curation. Of endless scrolling. Algorithms feed us only what we already believe, reinforcing our existing biases, creating echo chambers where our beliefs are never challenged. Social media now isn't designed to make us think. It's designed to make us react. And when you're reacting constantly, where's the space to reflect, to question? To dig deeper into ideas that don't fit neatly into a like or a share. It's like we're fed a version of reality that's designed to keep us comfortably numb. Never too challenged. Never too uncomfortable. And let's not forget about corporations and the culture of consumerism they create. We're taught that success means more things, more status, more comfort. But in this chase for materialism, are we losing sight of what truly matters? How much of our potential, our energy, our thought is poured into pursuing things that don't actually fulfill us? The more we cling to materialism, the further we drift from understanding the true nature of ourselves. It's as if the world is designed to keep us focused on the surface, on appearances, rather than what lies beneath. And that, by design, keeps us distracted, occupied, and just out of reach of deeper truths. 
And yes, even some religious and spiritual institutions. Could you believe that? Now, don't get me wrong. There's so much depth, so much wisdom and genuine spiritual practice. But sometimes even these institutions can turn into rigid structures that demand obedience over understanding, tradition over curiosity. Authentic spirituality encourages exploration and openness, a direct connection to the divine. But dogma can restrict our minds rather than free them. Instead of leading us towards enlightenment, it sometimes becomes another system that says, this is how it is, don't question it, and that, to me, feels like another form of control disguised as freedom. It's funny, isn't it? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. All the knowledge, all the wisdom in the world could be within reach. But if someone isn't willing to look, to question, to take that leap, it doesn't mean much. And that's what it feels like sometimes, especially when we see systems in place, nudging people away from critical thinking, from seeking their own truths. We have the water right in front of us, and yet for many, that thirst for knowledge That desire to truly understand just isn't there. But there's something we can do. We may not be able to force anyone to wake up, to break free from these invisible boundaries, but we can always salt their oats. We can drop hints, plant seeds, inspire curiosity. Sometimes that's all it takes, a single spark, a single question, a single idea that makes someone pause and think, wait, is there more to this? And that right there is where change begins. You can't force anyone to wake up, but you can show them that there's something worth waking up for. You can create an environment where curiosity feels natural, where seeking truth isn't just accepted, but celebrated. And any world that does everything it can to keep us in line, sometimes just asking a question, just cracking open the door a little, is the most powerful act of rebellion there is. So keep asking, keep questioning, keep seeking. The water's there, and yeah, we're salting the oats a little. It's up to each of us to decide if we're ready to take that drink. But let's dive even deeper. We've talked about the systems that keep us from thinking critically, from seeking truth about ourselves. But let's be real. It's not just that they discourage us. They often actively work against us, conditioning us to doubt our own instincts, to mistrust our own questions. And maybe one of the biggest barriers to awakening is us. Think about it. We're born with a natural curiosity. A drive to explore and understand, but as we grow, we're taught to let go of that instinct. Little by little, we're trained to trust external authority over our own experiences and insights. And when that happens, we start giving away our power. Let's look at how that conditioning plays out. Imagine you're in a room with a window that's almost always closed. Every once in a while, you get to peek outside, a glimpse of something bigger. But over time, you're told that there's nothing out there worth seeing. It's dangerous or pointless. Eventually, you stop trying to open the window at all. You accept that what you see inside the room is all there is. This conditioning isn't just theoretical. It's deeply embedded into our psyche. From a young age, we're told to accept the world as it is, to fit in, to follow rules, to stay within the lines. If you question too much, if you challenge too often, You're labeled a troublemaker, a dreamer, or worse, delusional. But what if those labels are just ways to keep us compliant? What if the very qualities that make us question reality, imagination, curiosity, a sense of wonder, are the keys to freedom? What if the real act of courage is daring to look through that window no matter what anyone else says? What about our comfort zone? The world loves a good comfort zone, doesn't it? They're safe, they're predictable, and there's nothing wrong with feeling safe. But what happens when our comfort zone becomes a prison? When it's no longer about safety, but about confinement? 
We're told that stepping outside our comfort zone is dangerous, risky, maybe even irresponsible. But here's the truth. Comfort zones don't protect us from life's challenges. They shield us from life's potential. They keep us small, confined to the familiar, never exploring what lies beyond. Growth, transformation, awakening, all of these happen outside the lines. And here's the thing about truth. It doesn't care about comfort zones. It doesn't mind if we're comfortable or not. It's always there, waiting to be discovered, whether we're ready or not. Then there's the power of groupthink. When everyone around you believes the same things, accepts the same limits, it can feel almost impossible to see beyond. We're social creatures, after all, wired to follow the tribe, but sometimes the tribe is blind lost in its own illusions. There's a famous saying, when everyone is thinking the same, no one is really thinking. And that's true on every level, personal, societal, spiritual. Groupthink isn't just a social dynamic, it's a mental trap. When we lose ourselves in the crowd, we lose touch with the part of us that's independent, that's free to explore without the need for approval. But here's the irony, the truth often starts with a single person willing to stand apart, to break from the group. History is full of people who dared to step outside the lines, who questioned what others wouldn't. And it's almost always those individuals who push the boundaries of what we know. So here's the challenge. Are we willing to be that person? Are we willing to break away from the group? To challenge the familiar? To risk standing alone in the pursuit of something greater. What about distractions? Distraction is everywhere, and that's not accidental. The more distracted we are, the less we think, the less we question. Think about it, every moment we're lost in a screen, mindlessly scrolling or watching, is a moment we're not engaging with ourselves, with our thoughts, with reality. Distraction keeps us from sitting in our own discomfort, from asking the big questions. Because if we're always looking outward, we never have to look inward. And that's exactly where the matrix wants us. Entertained, distracted, numb. So how do we break out of this? How do we resist the pull of comfort, the trap of groupthink, the lure of distraction? It starts with awareness paying attention to the little moments when we feel the urge to conform, to stay quiet, to go along with the flow. Awakening doesn't happen in one giant leap. It's a process of noticing, questioning and choosing, moment by moment. It's the courage to ask, what if there's more? Even when the world says, this is it. It's choosing to be the one who opens the window, even if everyone else is content when it's closed. Remember, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. But as we said, you can always salt their oats. And that's what we're here to do. Give that nudge. Plant that seed. Awaken that curiosity, because in the end, only you can choose to take that drink. So keep your curiosity alive, and don't let anyone or anything take it from you. Now that we've uncovered the systems that keep us from thinking freely, We've looked into our own conditioning and we've explored the hidden forces that pull us away from truth. Now it's time to talk about what happens after you start to wake up, because let's be honest, this isn't a one-time event. It's a process, and it can be intense. Once you start questioning everything, you might feel like you're in two worlds at once. One foot in the reality you thought you knew, and the other in a world that's raw, profound, and sometimes unsettling. You might feel like an outsider, like you're suddenly seeing things others don't. This is what we call the awakening paradox. As you gain clarity, as you begin to see the deeper layers of reality, it's like stepping out of a fog. But at the same time, you might find yourself wondering, why can't others see it too? That can be the hardest part. We can explain, share, try to show others what we're experiencing, but ultimately, not everyone is ready to see beyond the familiar. And that's okay. We all have our own timing, our own path. But it 
does mean that at times the journey of awakening can feel lonely. And that's why connecting with like-minded people is so important. Find those who are on a similar path. Those who aren't afraid to question, to dig deeper. In the world of awakening, community isn't just helpful, it's essential. Now here's something you might not expect. Awakening often means embracing not knowing. As much as you uncover, as many layers as you peel back, the deeper you go, the more mysteries you'll find. And there's a strange beauty in that. The more you know, the more you realize how much remains unknown. Awakening does not mean you have all the answers. It means you're willing to live in the question. Think about it. Everything we've talked about, systems, conditioning, comfort zones, distractions, it's all designed to make us feel certain, to make us feel like we have it all figured out. But real wisdom often begins with admitting we don't have all the answers. Finding comfort in the unknown, seeing the unknown not as something to fear, but as something to explore. When you start to awaken, it's easy to want to jump right out of the old world and into the new. To leave everything behind. But let's not forget about integration. We must not reject everything in our life. We must see things from a new perspective. Understanding that both the mundane and the mystical have a role in our growth. Because here's the thing. Life isn't all light and it isn't all darkness. Awakening means seeing both and recognizing they're interconnected. The challenge is not to run from the dark, but to understand its purpose. The systems, the distractions, the illusions, they're part of the learning process. They're obstacles, yes, but they're also opportunities to grow stronger, to become wiser. And when you see this balance between light and dark, suddenly it becomes less about escaping and more about transcending. And that brings us to the ultimate question. What's next? Once you're awake, once you see beyond the illusions, what do you do with that awareness? Awakening isn't about separating yourself from the world. It's about transforming how you live in it. Each of us has a role to play. We must find that purpose, a way to bring light into the world. It could be through art, through teaching, through healing. Or simply living as a conscious, compassionate human being. You see, the matrix isn't just an external system, it's an internal one too. Every time we let fear, doubt, or insecurity dictate our choices, we're creating our own matrix. But every time we choose courage, kindness, curiosity, we're breaking free, bit by bit. It's not about escaping reality, it's about creating a new one. As we close this journey, I'll leave you with one final thought. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And you can salt the roats to spark that thirst, yes, but ultimately, the choice to drink is theirs. And it's yours. So keep seeking, keep questioning, and remember that awakening is a journey, not a destination. Be patient with yourself. Be open to the unknown. And trust every step, every question, every revelation brings you closer to your true self. In the end, that's what awakening is all about. Not changing the world outside, but transforming the one within. Human Fluence, out.